Let's see. Oh, you know what? While we're here. Okay, before we do Popo's Bizarre Adventures, let's do this. So, probably a few of you are like, what's the rent? Right? Doesn't look bad. Looks like, what, a college dorm? It's got computer, got a bed, got a mini fridge. It's Norway. No, Caboose got there first. It's Norway. It is. This is a Norwegian. This is a common Norwegian prison cell. This is this is what an average prison cell in Norway looks like. Um, it is. They have such a low recidivism uh, rate that, in fact, they had to start shutting down prisons. Norway actually began co-locating prisoners for the surrounding nation states. Um, because they essentially proved that they could lower their recidiv recidivism rate to such an extent that they stopped needing prisons. They had them built, and for a while they had problems, but then Norway switched to a restorative justice model, and as a result of that, their rec recidivism rate dropped just right into the well. <clears throat> And so they had to start shutting down prisons. And what they started doing was offering their services to the surrounding regions as well. And so Norway is literally decreasing the amount of criminals at a multi-nation state level due to their progressive prison system. They are so good at treating prisoners the way they should be treated in Norway that they lower the rate of criminality in nations around them. It's, they get bulk goods. They get all sorts of stuff. They get access to higher health care. They get access to higher education. They get access to all sorts of things. College professors, mentors, psychologists, therapists. They get access to everything that would be necessary for the restorative and remediated process of healing somebody who was wounded by society. This is what an average prison cell in Norway looks like. And it works. And it works. So... With that happiness, shall we start Popo's Bizarre Adventures, everyone? Oh. So, I need to move some windows so I can get some things where some things need to be. Um... Anyone here in Norway I can marry for some... Uh, so first up good old Vicky White an escaped inmate Casey Cole White so why are we talking about inmates because uh yeah yeah, Karina. Uh, somebody, somebody fucking keep an eye. Somebody remind Karina. Yes, because the corrections officer here, this woman right here, helped this, this happy gentleman escape. Um, they're on the run right now. Yes, she fell in love. Um, <laughs> 
She, uh, they're, they're on the run right now. And in fact, the marshal service, oh, uh, they just got caught. Oh, good for them together, together. Uh, an hour announcement was an hour ago. Well then fuck that announcement. Um, I completely disregard that announcement because they're fucking up my, um, my headline schedule. So they're still on the wa- run and, um, just keep an eye out for them. Um, yeah, I don't care. I literally am saying, okay, which part of you people don't get the memes yet? Um, yes. So, well, are we going to have to deal with you, Evan? Feels like we're going to have to deal with you. He seems like a happy fellow. He seems like a happy fellow. I, I'm sure they'll have a long happy life together with um, um, between themselves. I'm sure they'll they'll get along great. Either way, keep an eye out for um, um, for Vicky White and um, what was his name? Casey Cole White. I'm sure you'll be seeing them either way. Um, <clears throat> so Florida. Florida, 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 Florida. Oh, Florida. Tampa. Tampa in this in this instance. Um a Florida sheriff's deputy was arrested. Hey, 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 hey. He was arrested. He was arrested. He was arrested. A Florida sheriff's def- uh, deputy um set well, he set his home on fire. Now you're thinking, like, was it insurance fraud? Was it, you know, was he just, like, was he really, 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 really bad case of um, bed bugs that he was trying to, you know, resolve? Um, yeah. Um, no, he was trying to burn his wife and children alive inside. Um, it was a attempted multiple homicide. Um, the ever so surprising statistic uh, coming out of the police is always um, showing that they are disproportionately abusive towards uh, their domestic partners. Proving true once again, Brian Williams, a former deputy now with the sheriff's office, is out on bond, by the way. Um so, yes, they were, they were, he and his wife were in the process of getting a divorce, uh, a divorce. Um, he didn't want the house to be turned over to his ex. Um, so he decided to burn the house down with the soon to be ex and children inside of it. Um, he broke the furniture, he put holes in the wall, he tackled the ex-wife, he set fire to their bed, um, he, he, while screaming, neither of them would get the house, he was, um, he was asked to be arrested and taken to jail, I, again, non-binary, why are you tagging me with this shit, man, some weird, like, I get it, like, I get it the first time, I don't care, I don't give a shit. For memes alone, I kept going with the story. I literally said, who here isn't getting the memes? Like, I don't care. <laughs> I've already moved on to a new story. You can, you can stop tagging me with that story. I saw it the first time this, the link went by. I chose to ignore it. Thank you for trying. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um... So, anyway, back to good old Williams here. <laughs> uh, good old Brian Williams here. Um, literally coming off of a domestic violence injunction. Um, the, violent, the domestic violence injunction that had been filed for, by his wife weeks prior to this incident, stating that the abuse had been going on for ages. 
Um, he was eventually, after he tried to burn the house down with him, with him, his wife and his children in it, though I, I have a sneaking suspicion he probably, tr he probably would have gotten out of the house if it, if it took. Um, he was arrested for arson, domestic battery, and two counts of violation of an injunction to, uh, for protection against domestic violence. Um, fired from his position, um, which, by the way, the arrest happened before the firing. Um, and, yeah, then they let him out on a bond. So Brian Williams here, not no relation, um, former deputy with the Tampa, uh, the I'm sorry, the DeSoto County Sheriff's Office, uh, who tried to burn his wife and children alive in their in their home, is out walking around on a bond because he's a former cop. I mean, I'm pretty sure if most of us try to execute our soon-to-be ex-wife and children in a house fire, arson, domestic battery, two counts of violation of an injunction. The violation of the injunction alone probably should have kept him behind bars. He already had, uh, he already had a TRO against him, but instead of, uh, uh, instead of, you know, handling the fact that the TRO had been violated, they let him out. They let him out. This guy is a known attempted murderer, spousal abuser, tried to burn his own children alive. And because he's a former cop, they basically let him out on bond. So, hey, fire. So, while we're in Florida, let's swing by Miami-Dade. Um, by the way, if you didn't know uh, the guy that Miami-Dade, Dade is named after, um, he's, uh, an, in, he's a, uh, an army officer that was charged with, uh, charged with, as in given orders to um, go kill a bunch of seminal indigenous um people who lived in, in the Florida region at the time. Um, he got massacred. He got massacred. He got massacred. Like 108 to 3 or some shit like that. Like the Seminoles lost three people and Dade lost like 108. Somehow in the grand tradition of like um, the, the like redneck states, right? In the grand tradition, grand tradition of those that fly the Battle flag of Northern Virginia. It's not the Confederate flag, kids. Um, in the grand tradition of those that would fly the stars and bars, um, he was a complete nutter loser. Yeah. Um, that, is, that is a tendency in those sorts of states that they build statues and, like, you know, give days to absolute losers, people who lost massive battles uh, because they were losers, um, the fact of the matter is, is that the Deep South, uh, in general, they lost. They got their shit kicked in. Um, they've always been the losers in this country. So, let's look at Miami-Dade. What's Miami-Dade up to? Well, four of their former correctional officers are charged with murder. Because they like to met out, shall we say, um, institutional justice um, behind the scenes. Uh, Christopher Rowland, Kirk Walton, Ronald Connor were arrested Thursday. And the fourth officer, uh, Jeremy Godbolt, uh, was arrested at LAX trying to flee. Um, they all face multiple charges, second-degree murder, conspiracy to commit second-degree murder, aggravated battery on an elderly or disabled person, and cruel, uh, cruel treatment of a detainee. Um, and they make fun of us for participation trophies. It is true. Um, so yes, it's of course, I mean, yeah, yes, yes, elderly or disabled. Um, well, so a 
essentially what uh, what they did. I'm just trying to see if like I have any pictures or footage that I can show. Um, no. Okay. So essentially what happened is in inmate um, threw piss on one of the corrections officers. Uh, no worries, cat. Um, I'm getting tagged multiple places. Um, all right. Okay. Um, thank you, Karina. So, hey, I've heard that song before. Yes. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the inmates tossed uh, a cup full of piss on one of the corrections officers. So they kicked the shit out of him, drug him to a transport van. And then somewhere between like they have the pictures, but there's dead spots. Um, Minutes before, like, you know, as they were dragging the inmate, like literally you can see the, the, the head is slumped. The legs are being dragged into the transport van. Um, so somewhere in between the moments captured on camera, they beat this guy so fucking senseless um, that they um, caused all sorts of internal bleeding. They then tossed him uh, into a van for transport. It was then a 300 mile drive from the Dade Correctional Institution where he was found dead by authorities afterwards. Um, so yeah, there's, there's actually 10 of them involved that like were initially, initially suspicious. Yeah. Clearly the truck just went over a speed bump, right? Um, yeah, they gave him, you know, you gave him a little of the old fashioned treatment. It's that simple. Um, so who wants to puke? Cause this one this one isn't going to like this is just this is just this is like copyright infringement. This is this is this this is um like bitch, get off our fucking Get off our fucking lawn. Everyone, here is the Orange County Sheriff's Department mutual aid tent at a local event for Orange County. Because apparently the Sheriff's Department now does mutual aid. Um... This, I do believe, is Cali Beast. Why is every second county in the U.S. apparently called Orange County? Reasons. Uh, I don't know, Caboose, but I would have given anything to walk up to them at that booth. Oh, the questions I would have. Oh, Cupcake, it's, I, I don't, it's neither. <laughs> That's behind the orange curtain. It's neither. It's neither. Um, it, uh, this is this is essentially a public relations outreach booth. This is probably more like, hey, you know, we're fucking. Uh, it's mutual aids. Uh, they probably just arrest you. They probably would, but I would have loved some questions to to be tossed their way to walk up, be like, mutual aid, huh? Cool, that's interesting. So what are you doing for the community? What sort of dual power structure are you setting up? How are you uh, taking power away from your police department, from your sheriff's department? Um, yes, like the Instagram post holding the little kids. Yes, 100%. This, this is more, this is PR more than anything else. Uh, not enough melanin in the skin to be arrested on site. No, I get away with some lippiness first. Yeah, if they don't know I'm an anarchist, I get away with some limpiness for a little bit. Yeah. If they know I'm an anarchist, I just get tackled to the ground. Yeah, that's definitely a thing that happens. So there's the Orange County Sheriff's Department mutual aid tent uh, coming to a, uh, you know, place near you, I guess.
cat, I'd probably try and fucking figure out and integrate. But you know they're not. Um. All right. Everyone, meet Brian Jeffrey Raymond. This is Brian Jeffrey Raymond, everyone. He's a former CIA officer. He worked as a U.S. Embassy staffer, sort of like undercover. He is, he is uh, classified, he is, he is described, I think, best as um, an experienced sexual predator. Um, he has um, <clears throat> drugged and raped at least 26 women that we're aware of. At least 26 women that we're aware of. Now, you see, he's already pleaded guilty to drugging and sexually assaulting at least 26 women while he was on assignment abroad. But you see, everyone, he's appealing because... He is impotent. And therefore, he couldn't have done what he was accused of. Even though there's plenty of evidence to, uh, to convict him, and he admitted to the fact, um, per his own admission, um, that he uh, was guilty of drugging and sexually assaulting at least 26 <coughs> women. Um Investigators, you know, found over 500 photos and videos of unconscious women in, in Raymond's own bed. Um, he could be seen in the various shots holding open the women's eyes, waving their limp arms and legs around, or putting his fingers in their mouths to show that they are indeed passed out cold. Um, but, you see, somehow he's not guilty because... He's, he suffers from erectile dysfunction, apparently. Um, he, uh, <clears throat> by the way, the way he got caught was a passerby reported seeing, quote, a naked hysterical woman desperately screaming for help on the terrace of a Mexico City apartment leased by the U.S. government. Investigators then investigated and found, well, Mr. Uh, Brian Jeffrey Reynolds here, uh, his little rape studio. Yes. So, either way. Yes. That's just, just, you know, just an example of it happens at this level, it happens at this level, it happens at this level, it happens at this level. It happens all across it. Like I've said before, if I had to include rape in the master list that I'm assembling, I'd be doing it for the next three years. Conservatives rape a lot. Uh, leased by the U.S. government. So he spent my health care money on raping women? Yes, he did, Zippy. He, in fact, did. Yes. Or rather, you know, the CIA did and the State Department did. Yes. I couldn't have raped those women. I ran out of Viagra. Can't run out of Viagra, man. You've got to get a supply. And today's sponsor of, uh, of Popo's Bizarre Adventures is BlueChew.com. Get your prescription for, uh, uh, for Viagra filled in the mail. Uh, <laughs> it's a real company, too, by the way, and they really do do that. Um, uh, just the Okinawa base alone could fill a book with sexual assault. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> It's so bizarre that some people assume to have a willy is necessary to rape someone. Um, the UK is still that way to a certain extent. Um, the UK only recently changed their laws, like within the last couple of years. It was literally impossible for a woman to rape a man in the UK up until like a handful of years ago. It Legally, it could not. There was no charge. There was no charge you could do because... All of their sexual assault and rape laws were predicated upon um, the insertion. And so up to recently, there was nothing that could be done in the UK. 
Uh, it can. It depends on the state. Some of the states were very, very slow to adopt. Let's just put it that way. <clears throat> oh, I mean, Chew Toy. Fucking legally, sure, legality finally catches up to morality. No, fucking, dude, there's still a lot of people that, dude, there's a lot of people that don't think men can be raped. Not by women, at least. That men can be raped by other men, but there's there's a lot of fucking people. A lot of fucking people. A lot of women, by the way, um, that do not believe men can be raped by women. Uh, what is rape? The Sexual Offenses Scotland Act 2009. Scotland's always ahead of the fucking curve over there. What is, what is, what is fucking, Jesus Christ. The Sexual Offenses Scotland Act uh, 2009 states that rape occurs when a person intentionally or reckless, recklessly penetrates. So, wait, 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 would Cawthorn fall under this one? R intentionally or recklessly penetrates another person's vagina, anus, or mouth with their penis. All right, all right. Cawthorn's still in the running. Where the victim does not consent and the person responsible has no reasonable belief that the victim is giving consent. So, yeah, it's still, Scotland still, Scotland still is on board with it. You have to have a penis to be a rapist. Cool. Cool, 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 Totally, totally. That's, yeah. Yeah. Occurs, rape occurs when a person intentionally or recklessly penetrates another person's vagina, anus, or mouth with their penis. So, like, I can just fist you. Like, I can just fist you, and we're good. Like, that's, that's totally not, like, I can go, like, fucking Texas baseball team and use a broom handle. <clears throat> Amber Heard's expert would say only men were aggressors. She brought up homosexual couples when asked if a man could be a victim. Oh, Jesus Christ. Dude, that, that trial is a fucking shit show. Um, Caligula did nothing wrong. This is Carpe. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Hashtag free Caligula. Hashtag Caligula did nothing wrong. <laughs> uh, lesbians get a pass. Yeah, no, for real. Yeah, even though lesbians have a higher domestic violence rate than uh, gay cop uh, gay men. <clears throat> Don't nobody wants to talk about that one. Nobody wants to talk about that one. Do they have a significantly disproportionately larger domestic violence rate between uh, lesbian couples than they do gay male couples? It's a thing. It's a thing. Ain't nobody want to be talking about that one. And nobody wanted to talk about that one. <laughs> What's up, Caleb? Uh, stop it. We can only talk about acceptable inequalities in society. Uh, lesbian bondage is so much harder than straight. No way, really? Yeah, no, Rex. That's actually a real statistic. Um, yeah, domestic violence is lower. Um, in it's domestic violence is higher in, um, homosexual couples, but only when you factor in lesbian couples, if you remove lesbian couples from the equation, domestic violence rates is lower or lower in homosexual couples. Um, it's the lesbian couples that drive the rates up. Um, the homosexual males have a, a lower average rate of domestic violence inc incidents, whereas lesbian couples have a higher rate of domestic violence. I don't know what it was about. Look, I have no sociological insight into this. I have no, nothing I can say beyond that just these are the numbers. Like, this is, this is how it plays out. Because <laughs> Zippy said, because lesbians aren't homosexuals, they just haven't found the right guy. Oh, man. <clears throat> um, so, here is my favorite pair of stories <laughs> Karina women be shopping um <laughs> just just as I did it fuck it just sort of washed through women be shopping <laughs> just, it's so dismissive <laughs> fuck it women be crazy y'all <laughs> It's in that category of just so just like offhand flippant remark. I love it. I love it. Oh, fucking A. Okay. So, oh, this isn't, okay. So this isn't my, this isn't my favorite pairing. I've got a pairing of stories in this list that I adore, but 
Uh, New Zealand, true. Uh, wage have between men and women, shrimping with cohorts through the population. What nobody mentions is a part-time work is a double-digit plus in favor of women, which I guess is not vogue, in vogue to discuss. Not sure how it is in the U.S. I don't know. Uh, I don't know here, uh, Chew Toy. Oh, we'd have to look into it. So, <laughs> um, Florida as well. We're back to Florida. Um, Lake Wales, Florida. Um, I'm not even in. Sh- I'm not even sure where the fuck that is. I've never been to Lake Wales, Florida. Let's look at a map really quickly. Okay, so it's sort of, it's sort of online with Tampa. It's sort of in this. It's it's sort of online with Tampa. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I blame I blame U-Haul. If they just made their booking system much more simple, there would be significantly less rates of domestic violence between lesbian couples. I swear to God, it's so complicated. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> so, a sheriff's volunteer officer, um, age 69. <sighs> so... He's a volunteer officer. Like, he was allowed to have a uniform. He was allowed to have access to, like, the vehicles, to, like, squad cars. He was out, like, patrolling. He was out in the field. Like, this is, this is like a volunteer firefighter, only volunteer cop. So, same sort of powers. He still had the ability to arrest, apparently, in some form or fashion, or detain at least. Um, he was selling oxycodone out of the out of the cop car. Yeah, um, he was he was selling oxys out of the cop car. That's 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 what he was doing. Um, he was all <laughs> he was also a convicted felon already. And when they checked his home, they found baggies of cannabis. They found baggies of oxycodone, but they also found firearms. Um, this dude was a convicted felon who was a, a volunteer cop who was selling oxys out of the cop cars. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. This is. <clears throat> This is the sheriff. We're embarrassed. Someone messed up 12 years ago on a background. He's been a stellar volunteer, very well loved, done a good job, except when he's selling oxys out of the car using it as cover. That's the sheriff. The sheriff said he's been a stellar volunteer, very well loved, done a good job, except for when he's selling oxys out of the car using it as cover. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like oh, it does it does great work, except for you know that part. Five uh, D play, I think, dude, I think it is. I think it's a five D play, hundred percent. Good on him. Um. Let's see. He fit right in. <laughs> uh, so I can't show you the video, of course. Uh, well loved by the community until his supply runs out. Exactly, Garbet. Got to keep him. Got to keep him fucking fresh. Got to keep him fresh. Um. So here is Quandry Sanders. Okay, this this man's name is Quandry. Q-U-A-N-D-R-Y. Quandry Sanders. Um, Quandry was not a good boy. Okay. Let's, let's, let's put this, let's frame this correctly. Um, Quandry was not a good boy. Um, he was a bit violent. He was, um, he was, well... He was a bit violent. He was a bit of uh, he had a bit of a, a an aggression issue, shall we say, um, and he had a, a propensity for threatening um, people with violence. So when um, December fifth of last year, by the way, we're just getting this footage. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding you. This is May 9th. Um, fucking, um, so. On December, tw- uh, on December 5th of last year, um, he was at the home of a man who was under a protective order. Um, Mr. Sanders had a dispute with the woman um, at the residence, and he violated a protective order. And as a result, the caller called the police and reported that Mr. Sanders was present in violation of a protective order and was in possession of a firearm. Um, He was, at the time, refusing to let one of the residents leave. Okay? Like I said, he's not a good boy. This is Quandry Sanders. He's not... I, I will be honest, for a moment, I considered not even including him because it's a difficult case to argue for. But here is the here is the case for de-escalation, right? When the officers rolled up, and there is footage, there's there's complete footage. Um, yeah, um. When he, the officers rolled up, they used the, uh, the, 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 the loudspeaker on their vehicle to announce their presence and to tell him to come outside. A woman at that time um, exits, the, uh, exits the home, and Mr. Sanders at that time exits from, uh, he emerges from the back door. Um, you can see him clearly. He complied with the officer's commands to show his hands. Um, he ran back inside. <clears throat> he freaked out. He ran back inside the house. Um, when he started exiting the house again, the officer, one of the officers who rolled on the scene approached him, and this is we have body cam footage of this, um, directing him to put his hands up and to get down on the ground. He moves slightly by the refrigerator, and as he raises his hands, all captured on video, when he raises his hands, one of the officers shoots him four times. He falls to the ground. The officers start yelling, hands, hands, hands. It shows him sitting up with his hands above his head, at which point he is shot repeatedly again. Fifteen rounds were fired. The four rounds by Officer Ronan and the eleven rounds by Officer Hinkle. So, you can clearly see in the video the hands go up. And four shots are fired. He slumps down. He's sitting with his hands above his head. And it is that point which he is shot 11 more times. They shout at him at that point to roll, to stay down and roll over on your stomach. You can hear him say, I'm down. I can't breathe. They then drag his limp body, leaving a trail of blood on the driveway, of wh- at which point they do not begin any mer- emergency medical assistance for over two minutes after firing the final shots. So, yes. Um, if you want the footage, here's some of the footage. Link in chat. Now, <clears throat> the two officers were fired from their, uh, their, their jobs on the police force in January 7th after an internal investigation. It's fairly quick, given December 5th to January 7th, basically a month, right? Uh, all things considered, after an internal investigation, credit where credit's due to the Lawton Police Department, 
Um, they said we it was not in conformance with our policies and standards. Um, and as a result, there uh, they were separated from the department, and there will be a uh, a separate criminal investigation and char uh, and charges filed at the state level because it was handed over immediately to the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. Um, and the county district attorney, um, they will be issuing charges probably this Friday. So credit where credit's due. Um, the only thing that I have major criticism of here is the $25,000 bail that we know would probably be a hundred thousand dollars for somebody, but uh, by, uh, for somebody else. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, Mr. Ronan the officer who fired uh, 11, I'm sorry, for the initial four rounds, um, Mr. Ro uh, Mr. Ronan was previously under investigation for the fatal shooting of another black man. Um, that was January 2021. Uh, in the year of 20, uh, the year of our Lord, tw uh, 2021, Officer Ronan managed to summarily execute two black men. Uh, the first shooting occurred just three miles from where Mr. Sanders was shot. Um, it's a city. Lawton is a city of uh, just over ninety, just over ninety thousand um, populace. So about an hour southwest of Oklahoma City. So in a town of just over ninety thousand people, this uh, one officer had managed to summarily execute two black men in one year. <clears throat> so, yes. Credit where credit's due. They got fired. Now, they haven't been charged yet, Glazy. They got they got fired. They didn't get fired for the first one either, by the way. <clears throat> they didn't fire a charge for the first one. Um, but for this one, um, they both were released from their contracts. And it looks like the Oklahoma Bureau of Investigation and the county district attorney probably will be filing charges. What charges they, 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 they properly file, we'll see uh, after that, that point. Um, oh, this is, this was, yeah, it was. All right. Everyone gets one free murder, I guess. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, what do you think the steps for improving this kind of situation are for the U.S.? It depends how you want to approach it, Chew Toy. I've given multiple examples before of how one can tackle this problem. Um, there's even free market solutions if you want to implement them. There's a multitude of ways. <clears throat> um, a uh, a four-year college degree is a good starting point. Um, if you just want to implement a pure market solution, a... Um, a personally held liability insurance policy is your starting point. Um, you dissolve the police union. You institute a uh, personally held liability insurance policy. Um, and if a police officer is not able to provide a, uh, a liability policy, then they are ineligible for service. The insurance companies, after one or two payouts, depending on the size of those payouts, will start to jack the rates through the roof, making it more difficult for them to maintain their liability policy. You pay out one 10 or $15 million policy, uh, policy payout, and you will be uninsurable. Um, and at that point, you literally just can't be employed. So there's some educational methodologies. There's some pure market solutions that you could implement that the capitalists would be more than happy to go with the libertarians would fucking go with you on that one. You could go mutual aid and uh, community driven program like the Minneapolis star and um, cahoots program over in Oregon. Um, there's a variety of ways to begin uh, tackling this, but don't look for it to happen anytime soon. <clears throat> so Pennsylvania Pennsylvania. Oh, Bentleyville. Bentleyville, Pennsylvania. Trooper Brian Rousseau. Trooper, Trooper Brian Rousseau 
pulled um this is this is a federal lawsuit that has just made okay so this federal lawsuit you you go back you probably find it you stories about this starting around november of last year the federal lawsuit has just reached a, a sort of a milestone in its process and it's filing and so it's moving forward <clears throat> that's why we're talking about this now um trooper rousseau good old brian rousseau pulled behind um holly ellish uh, Holly Ellish is a 34-year-old at the time, woman from uh, Bentleyville. She was headed home from work um, when she was pulled over for speeding. Um, she was pulled over for traveling five miles per hour over the speed limit. Uh, <clears throat> now, Ellish of... Um, Rousseau pulled behind Ellish and began following her. Um, prompting her to, at that time, put her hazard lights on to notify the trooper that she intended to pull over, as is standard policy and procedure taught to drivers the country over. No, it is not Carpe. Um, Rousseau did not attempt to immediately stop Elish. <clears throat> she turned off her flashers and attempted to take the next exit. It was at that point that Rousseau activated his emergency lights she pulled over and the trooper approached her car and gave her identification uh, she gave her uh, she gave him her identification this is all according to the complaint and probably uh the evidence that will be turned up in discovery <clears throat> he returned to the window her window a few minutes later and then walked back to uh and walked back to ellish's uh passenger side he then asked for her con her consent to search the vehicle she refused. <clears throat> she refused. He replied with something along the lines of, I have the right to search your vehicle. At this point, a second trooper arrives. This second trooper speaks with Rousseau outside of Elish's hearing. She, doesn't, she did not have that opportunity to hear what they said. The troopers then double teamed her and asked Elish to exit her vehicle, again asking for her permission to search her vehicle. Quote, fearing for her safety and knowing that the police did not have justification to search her vehicle, yet were insistent and intimidating in attempting to do so, Miss Elish allowed the vehicle search to, uh, to occur under both duress and coercion. <clears throat> now, Ms. Elish is not a drug user. Ms. Elish is not a drinker. Ms. Elish was merely headed home from working. So there was nothing to be found in the search. And after 15 minutes or so, two more troopers arrived. For those in the class that like to read ahead, please keep it to yourself. After 15 minutes, two, uh, two, uh, two more troopers arrived this time including a woman. <clears throat> it was at that time that the female trooper directed Elish to stand beside a state police SUV on the side of the road and instructed her that she would begin a strip search. It was at that time that the trooper physically <clears throat> and visually inspected Elish's breasts she then directed Elish to pull down her pants and underwear to her ankles and squat to the ground, during which, during which she was instructed to bend down to the ground with one knee, and the trooper then performed a visual cavity inspection. According to the complaint, <clears throat> the trooper looked at Ms. Elish when putting gloves on her hand and said, I'm sorry, this is the worst part of my job. Just before the trooper was to begin the physical cavity search, she asked Elish if she knew why Rousseau and the other trooper wanted the search done. In response, Miss Elish stated that, in fact, she did not know, that she did not have any contraband, and that she was simply on her way to a home from work to pick up her, uh, from work to pick up her child. It was at that time 
that the female trooper refused to carry out the cavity search and told Ellish that she was free to leave. No criminal charges were ever filed. The traffic citation filed against against Ellish for doing 60 in a 55 mile per hour speed zone was dismissed at hearing after Trooper Rousseau failed to appear. The lawsuit does go on to note that the troopers never saw or found contraband on Ellish or saw her drive erratically and that there was nothing that would require urgent action or a warrantless search. The male officers involved in a beside-the-road search called out a female officer to strip search and vaginally penetrate someone they had pulled over for shits and giggles. They were getting off on it. It's that simple. There was no anything. There's nothing. And even the female trooper refused to do the strips, refused to do the vaginal penetration after she realized that, oh shit, there's nothing going on here. No, the female cop raped her and then just refused to finger her. The, The female cop sexually assaulted the woman and then just refused to close the deal. No, she's not a good cop. She, she sexually assaulted a woman on the side of the road because her fellow officers told her to. No, that's not a good cop. A good cop wouldn't have done the sexual assault in the first place. A good cop would have done their due diligence ahead of time. A good cop wouldn't put up with that shit. A good cop would have resigned from the force up, up, immediately upon encountering that sort of thing. No, no pookie. She's not a good cop. She just found her line that she finally wouldn't cross. But that's it. She still violated her civil liberties. She still sexually assaulted her. She was still guilty and complicit of carrying out a conspiracy to uh, to deny a, a citizen their rights. That's not a good cop. So, no. No. So let's talk about the 16-year-old trans girl. So for Europeans this is going to be a little confusing because I don't know if you guys know that we use cops to enforce school policy, right? Like if you're absent from school in Germany, say, the cops don't show up. Right? We use cops to enforce school policy. If you're absent from class, the cops show up. We use tickets. In fact, there was a recent study that found a disproportionate amount of all tickets given to kids. By the way, did you know we give tickets to students? We give tickets to students for infractions, things that we used to give detention and suspension for, now get legal citations and put students, kids, into the justice system ahead of time. So in this instance, what we're dealing with is Tennessee. Tennessee, I lived there. I've, I have fond memories. <sighs> La latte, I stayed home from school one day because of panic attacks and the school sent a fucking cop. They did. I don't doubt that in the, uh, in the, in the least. Uh, <clears throat> the prison slavery industrial complex induction department moving into the schools. Yep, it's been there for a while too. So <clears throat> this is uh, Viowin. V I O W Y N N. Viowin. Uh, Viowin is a transgendered 16 year old girl who lives in Tennessee who 
was live streaming Minecraft, not Minecraft. Basically what happened was she knew this was coming. So she hopped on a stream and made sure there was documentation and witnesses. When Wynn attends a school in Tennessee and that school refuses to correctly gender or recognize Wynn for who Wynn wants to be. It doesn't matter whether Wynn is or isn't. This is America. Wynn wants to be, therefore Wynn is. This is how bodily autonomy works. This is how being a human being works. It doesn't really matter whether you have an opinion on this or not. The only opinion, in my opinion, that matters is Ms. Wins. The school refused to recognize uh, Wins' gender and as such continually misgendered, continued to refuse access to what is perceived to be the appropriate bathroom, refused to acknowledge any of the gender-affirming uh, aspects of what a 16-year-old would need affirmed for their transition, and generally made life a living hell for Wynn. So Wynn stopped going because the school refused to give Wynn an education. They were making her life miserable. Well, <clears throat> since she didn't show up from school, the cops were deployed. You know, the heroes in blue. Well, the heroes in blue bust in. And you can see just the happy, 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 happy types. Right? Look at them both. Look at these pieces of shit. Just old, old white men. Just old white men. Right? They bust in and quote, dragging her into foster care. And the douchebag cop even had the audacity to say, are you winning? Even did the fucking meme. Quote, this will probably be the last stream ever because they're trying to get me to either kill myself or go into foster care or something instead of just giving me an education. Honestly, I just want to go to school, but they don't want me to go to school because I'm trans. I'm just really stressed out. 17 minutes, well, 15 minutes later, the cops busted into her room and arrested her. They, they detained her forcibly. And... That is the last update I have. All I can tell you, Tennessee has started arresting trans kids. You can qualify that however you want and say, well, Tennessee is arresting truant kids. Mm, no, in this instance, they're arresting a trans kid specifically for... not being able to obtain the education that they are legally entitled to. Um, yeah, Keffels is the, the, the fellow trans live streamer that fucking got the footage out there and made sure like when it came down, it stayed up. So credit to Keffels for sure. Um, Vio Win, V I O W Y N N. Um, and if you want, here is where you need to start. Here's Keffels. So we're going to speed over this one. Um, I'm just going to put a couple of links in chat uh, for those that want to follow this story because it's a very big story, actually. Um MIT's technology review is doing a um, 
series of things, an investigation into law uh, law enforcement agencies, specifically the Minnesota law enforcement agencies. Um, but that investigation, quote, revealed an extensive surveillance network that targeted activists in the aftermath of uh, murder of George Floyd. Uh, it, it is illegal surveillance. There is a lack of accountability. There is a disproportionate, uh, there are d- disparities in the policing. Um, it is a very large report and series of investigations that I am not going to get into, but part of it plays into the Minnesota Department of Human Rights report that's 72 pages. Um, I don't know, Karina. I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't know. Um, and so, yes, um, feel free to look into it. It is a two year inquiry and plus, um, it is the, 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 the Minnesota department of human rights is in, is consistent with the MIT technology review investigation. Um, and they basically it has established the probable cause that the city of Minneapolis and the MPD violated the Minnesota Human Rights Act. Um, and so now the Minnesota Human Rights Department is going to work with Minneapolis public officials to work on like the specific changes that need to be made for enforceability within the court system. Um, but yes, there is 700 hours, 40, 480,000 pages of documents it is all sorts of deep. Um, so, yes, um, there is also the technology review on um, the secret police new era of surveillance uh, as well. That's the, like the overarching. So the latest link I just put into chat will do the shadowy um, surveillance machine that, that was built around the George Floyd protests. And then the police system that for watching the George Floyd protests and act surveillance activity mechanisms, um, how it was kept going inside. Uh, they then like delve into the app that the Minneapolis police used to collect data on journalists at protests. Uh, and then there's further investigation into how they use fake social media profiles and systems to surveil black people and infiltrate political activists. And so it is, it is a large, um, it is a large topic. Um, and so have at it, uh, if you so choose. Yeah, no, I mean, here's, here's all the links. If anybody wants the fucking Keffel stuff, like that's, you can, um, <laughs> zippy, um, but let's see. All right. Oh, do we have his picture? We have his picture. We have a service picture. Oh, I love when we have the service picture. I love when we have the service picture. Um, meet Sean McKenzie. Um, no, no zippy. Well, I mean, he's not, no, he's not rapey. I mean, it depends how you define rapey, I suppose. Um, this is, this is Sean McKenzie. Um, he was arrested last Tuesday. Um, He's facing 32 counts of sexual abuse of children and two counts of criminal abuse of communications facility, uh, 21 counts of child pornography, 10 counts of dissemination of photograph, videotapes, and computer depictions and films. So... You know, I'm sure he's one of the good apples, right? Is that is that one of the good apples they talk about all the time? Hmm. Maybe, I suppose. I don't know. How many service rewards did he get? Actually, 
Um, he is, hang on. He has received accolades before for something. I forget what he, um, um, He is an awarded cop. Yeah. Um, oh, also, by the way, he, uh, one of the things he, <laughs> he liked to put cameras in bathrooms um, where children were present. <clears throat> sort of his thing. Sort of his thing. Sort of his thing. He liked, he liked putting cameras in bathrooms of children. Um, Is that, oh, finally, getting close to those. So, I mean, that's all I have to say about him, right? You know, another kid fucker. Another conservative kid fucker. How do you know he's conservative, Kai? Because he's a cop. They're all conservative. Um, so, Barris McKenzie. Barris McKenzie is a 64-year-old. Um, he's um, in Florida, by the way. Um, Lauder Hill, Florida. He's an independent entrepreneur. Let's just put it that way. He, he sells things out of his van. Not illegal things. He sells coconuts and sugar cane and sort of like uh, traditional snacks and like beverages from around the Caribbean. Um, he's, you know, he gets by. He gets by. He was at a quick stop food store on Northwest 16th Avenue. And unfortunately, Mr. Mr. McKenzie um, <clears throat> didn't pay the tithe to our overlords. You see, Mr. McKenzie um, didn't have a permit to sell his goods. So the cops roll up on him and, quote, It's a, uh, quote, wrap it up, boss, wrap it up. And the officer sort of, you know, come on, man. Come on. You can't sell here. McKenzie ignored the request. Cop says, what did I tell you? McKenzie goes, it's, it's a, you again, man. Can't you just give me a break? I just got here because someone called me. Just so just relax. So, Mr. McKenzie was upset by the cops attempting to roust him from engaging in free market commerce without the yoke of the state intervening in between he and his legitimate clientele. If the libertarians and the free market uh, ones want to... Uh, um, uh, in fact, yes, Skeeter, there's already Marsha Blackburn talking about doing that. She is a GOP Senator. Um, she floated that idea. So yes, in fact, that's a real thing that's been floated by conservatives already. But anyway, back on track. Um, <clears throat> it was at that time that Mr. McKenzie used two Jamaican curse words and told the cop to go look for some thieves or someone who's selling Coke and crack and leave him alone. The body cam footage confirms Mr. McKenzie asking the officer to give him a break. It was at that time that the cops asked him for ID and he locked himself in his van for a few moments. Literally, after, after several moments, he exited the vehicle, and but he continued to ignore the officer's commands to stop selling. It was at that time that the officer began yelling, do you want to get tased? Do you want to get tased? Do you want to get tased? He was, stuck, he was struck three times with a taser before the officer placed handcuffs on him. Per the report, he was charged, arrested and charged with resisting without violence and violating a city, a city ordinance. Uh, <laughs> 
personally, I think it's a pretty clear example of how cops don't know how to de-escalate and they only know how to escalate. Yes, Mr. Barry McKenzie here was clearly, uh, Barris, sorry, Barris McKenzie, um, was looking to not de-escalate, but it is the job and role of the police officer to be able to handle that situation. Um, and so tasing a 64 year old Jamaican dude who's selling coconuts and sugar cane out of the back of his van seems like a bit of a waste of our time, doesn't it? But you see, he didn't get us, he didn't get a permit. And so it then violence is allowed. The monopolization of force on behalf of the state imparted to those officers allows for the violent stopping of that transgression. It doesn't matter whether it is simply he doesn't have a permit to sell coconuts. If they tell him he can't, he can't. And it is if he refuses, then they are authorized by the state apparatus to employ force to cause him to cease and desist. So these officers did what they do. They maintain the status quo. They maintain the status quo of the ruling elite. And the ruling elite say, you cannot engage in any market activity without providing us our cut. He didn't provide them their cut. Therefore, he was in violation of the rules, as it were. And he was engaged violently when he refused to stop being tased three times and as we've seen before being tased multiple times especially in an advanced age as 64 is can and oftentimes is fatal so they risked killing this man over a city permit that wasn't purchased for selling coconuts and sugar cane out of the back of a van sure Sure. I'm sure there's a few good cops. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's good apples. Roadside selling is an American tradition. These people are infringing on our rights, or, or on our heritage. I know, right? So here are, I've been waiting for these two stories. I have been waiting for these two stories. This, this is, this is. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> a few weeks ago, a three-month-old infant was kidnapped from an apartment, um, a friend of the child's family's apartment, right? There was a frantic 18-hour search by law enforcement, by the community at large. There, was, there were three people involved, three suspects, but a man snatched the baby boy from the San Jose apartment and took off. Broad daylight. Fucking broad daylight. This dude just kidnaps a fucking kid and goes, right? Now... The kid, the, 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 the manhunt for the missing boy and the suspects accused of kid, they, they, they found him essentially the next day. This is, this is not the portion of the story that we will be covering. All right? This is the backdrop of the story that we'll be talking about. Now, amidst the, um, amidst the kidnapping of a three-month-old baby boy. San Jose Police Department. What were those guys up to? Well, <clears throat> for at least one officer, um, see if I can. Yes, okay. Um, For at least one officer on the scene, what was true for him was that 
Yes, there may be a baby missing. There's a three month old on on the uh, on the uh, on the lamb right now. Um, but really, you can't let a three month old being kidnapped in the middle of the day get in the way of your buzz. So one of the officers that showed up to the house that was directly engaging in the search for a missing three-month-old child was, well, drunk as a skunk. He was drunk. He was straight up intoxicated. Now, this wouldn't be that much of a story, right? Like, the fact of the matter is, is that Drunk cops are about as old as the day is long. It's sort of a grand tradition within police departments in the fraternal order for being drunk. Um, this happens on the heels, of course, of the San Jose police officer who died of a fentanyl overdose because he stole, he stole drugs from the scene. And they found him dead at his home from a fentanyl overdose. So right on the heels of a fentanyl overdose from a, a cop who got caught sneaking drugs from a scene. During the kidnapping of a three-month-old child, San Jose's police department again has another incident where an officer shows up to the, uh, to the crime scene drunk. Now again... Taken individually, you'd be like, all right, well, you know, there's drug and alcohol abuse amongst high, uh, you know, high pressure positions and professions. We know they have higher addiction rates. And so this is just an example of, um, you know, malformed coping behaviors admits to police department that is under stress. And maybe you maybe you might be right. Um, if not for the fact that. On the heels of that officer who was found to be drunk at the scene of the three-month-old child who had been kidnapped, we now know that another officer was at the home of the child, the apartment, that the, um, the child that had been kidnapped, the very same case, where in one room there's a dude basically walking around going, you know, you know, what, your, you know what your problem is? You think too much. That's your problem. You think too much. Right? You've got him in one room. We now know in the other room what was occurring was that another, uh, another cop was engaging in another coping behavior for a high-stress position, shall we say. Um, the other cop was in the other room rubbing one out. So, at a crime scene where a three-month-old child has gone missing, you've got one drunk cop, you've got a horny cop masturbating in the other room, on the heels of a cop who got caught stealing drugs and dying from an overdose a week prior. This, folks, is the San Jose Police Department. This is the police department in San Jose is in the middle of the search, a manhunt for a three month old child, a cop in the apartment where the child was kidnapped from took a couple of minutes to whip it out and rub one out. I've been waiting for these two stories since I've started Popo's Bizarre Adventures this time. Like, I don't even... I don't even fucking... I don't even... Know. Oh, how did... Uh, <clears throat> the aristocrats! Um, Marcus, I love you for that one. Um, Zippy, how, um, how'd they catch him? A resident spotted him. <laughs> Somebody saw him. 
So they straight up saw him. They fucking saw him. Um, they saw him at the scene. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was, it was stopped immediately. It took him a few minutes to like report it, but it was stopped immediately. Right? Like the officers walked in on him. <laughs> Apparently, by all accounts, the police detained one of their own at the scene because they fucking like one of the residents saw him in another room with his fucking willy out whacking it away. Yes, San Jose's finest for sure. Whacking it away and goes, there's a cop masturbating in the other room. And, you know, one of the cops like, ah, I'm sure they fucking they go in. And the dude's got his fucking dick out in his hand. So, yeah, they did. The police detained him at the scene. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know which room thing. I wish I knew. Hey, level. Um, oh, I bet they let him finish. I bet they let him finish, honestly. Um, he st- the only thing we know, detail-wise, here's what we know. He stepped away from the group inside the home and began to masturbate. <laughs> oh... I swear to God, there's a comedy sketch about this. Did someone say that? Uh, say that right? I don't know, but I mean, if you find it, <laughs> did they help? But did they help him finish? Um, uh, yes. So you know, if you if you happen to be in San, San <laughs> Rev, if you happen to be in and around the San Jose, California Police Department, or anything in and around the San Jose metropolitan area, and you you planning on potentially having any interactions with the San Jose Police Department, understand you could probably get out of whatever ticketing offense that they're they're about to hit you with if you offer just to give them a hand job and a shot. It's like, hey, here's a here's a little mini uh, like an airline bottle of tequila, and I'll give you a fucking hand job around back. You let me go. Because it seems to be this seems to be their thing. Key and Peel sex detective uncensored. Okay, duly noted. Oh. What if you get one of them lady cops? You kick her in the fucking gash and you run. Um. Back to Pennsylvania. Back to Pennsylvania. This one's not as f- this one's not as amusing. I'll give you that one. Um, drunk cop. Drunk cop. Um, the state's bureau uh, uh, bureau of criminal investigation is going to handle the uh, the investigation, but a cop uh, was found having blood alcohol levels three times the legal limit when he rammed into a firefighter's personal pickup truck in a parking lot in the fire station shortly before midnight. He um, was driving around drunk with three times the legal limit in his, in his um, state-issued SUV. He, he was driving around in his state police SUV fucking shit and he was in one of the shared community build uh, like parking lot buildings and boom, r- just boom, right into the fucking firefighters pickup truck. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, yes. The age old rivalry, right? Yeah. In the parking lot on the fire station and hit the personal truck. What a jackass. Yeah. Um, he was taken to the local hospital for testing. He was seen. He, he had a 0.24. Um, so <laughs> he's got two misdemeanor counts. That's it, by the way. He's got two misdemeanors. He'll be on restrict. He's on restricted duty. <laughs> this guy's this guy's ro- riding around drunk uh, in his fucking trooper vehicle. <laughs> Like in his SUV, fucking, um, and he got like two misdemeanors, and he's still on the force. Yeah. Just off the temp. All right. So <sighs> this one comes from across the pond. You probably blacked out and that's it. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. This one comes from across the pond. 
So there's going to be, there's going to be like different wee woos. I don't know if we get the wee woos and, um, but there's going to be like, you know, that weird accent that like the foreigners put on when we're around, you know, they don't keep that accent up by the way. Right. Like all of us know that, right? Like foreigners, there's no such thing as a foreign accent. Everybody speaks like, like Americans. It's just when we're around, they like to fuck with us. So they put on weird fucking accents and stuff. It's totally a thing. The rest of the world does just to fuck with us. Trust me on that one. I've seen studies or something. Anyway, um, 0.24 and hit a vehicle. Fucking lightweight. Um, <clears throat> so apparently the uh, uh, Sussex police, <laughs> well, you'll see. You'll see. Past 11, as seen in the video yesterday, Arthur was caught on dash cam running across the road where an unmarked police vehicle swerved into Arthur, colliding with him. We okay, it's difficult to catch, but did you guys catch that? Here, let's mute, let's mute fucking, yeah, exactly. Hello, governor, let's, let's, let's mute that, all right? So here's Arthur. Arthur darts across the fucking street, and the cop across the way veers into, uh, uh, into oncoming traffic and hits the dude. I don't need you, bro. I just need your footage. Yeah. Whack. He, he, I mean, okay. So here's what you need to understand. One, the jaywalking thing isn't a thing over there. For, so for the Americans that are like, he just ran into traffic. Yeah, people run into traffic. Most of the world doesn't recognize jaywalking laws. That's not a thing for most of the world. Um, they have some in some places, but it's it's really, right? It's not a, bit, it's not a thing for most places. Um, so that's not a thing. People run into traffic. Now, Arthur would have been just fine. Had the cop not veered into oncoming traffic, crossing the center line, and hitting him with their car. Uh, so the Sussex police officer uh, who was driving that vehicle is now under criminal investigation, credit or credit's due, um, for, I mean... You know, attempted vehicular manslaughter. I don't know what we want to charge that with, but the fact of the matter remains, at the end of the day, he crossed the center line in order to hit a dude with his car. So, yeah. Um, I mean, they kind of do with her, just not in the same way we do. Ooh, 10 points, this cop. Um, why would people, uh, why would places value people over cars? I know, Patronum, weird, right? Um, yes, Crimson. In fact, J, um, the origin of J uh, for jaywalking, J used to be an old-timey uh, slur for poor people. It's poor people. Jaywalking is poor people walking. That's, that's you're being charged with being poor. That's what jaywalking means. Imagine if I, I said you're being charged with broke walking, right? That's, that's you know, poverty walking. You, you have received a citation for poverty walking. That's what jaywalking means. It's an old-timey slur for broke-ass motherfuckers. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Kai, did you see we bought a Formula One property? Since it's our taxes paying for it, figure we all own it. Hmm, nice. Uh, oi, bruv, you can't do a walk, uh, whack a book with your, ca uh, with your car. Um, I, uh, latte, I did not know that. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's um, it's a thing. Uh, dig, I jaywalk everywhere. So do I, man. Um, a fact, uh, across the center line that demonstrates either incompetence or the level of inebriation or malicious intent. Take your pick. Yeah, tech support. Right here in Tulsa said fact, um, there was a lady with a gun walking near a school and she was really out of it. When the police car came up to her speeding, she freaked out and started shooting at the cop. The cop ducks and just revs the engine, runs over and neutralizes the subject. Yeah. Um, I wonder if there may have been a better way to not escalate that in the first place. I don't know. Yeah. 
Don't roll up and freak people out with fucking mental illnesses and guns. Uh, fucking, fucking A. Um, okay, so this one you you guys had to have heard of. Um, Florida, again, this is on St. Pete's Beach. Um, this is not the first time that the, the Pinellas, uh, Pinellas, um, fucking, it is Pinellas, but it's, it's Pinellas. Uh, Pinellas uh, County uh, Sheriff's Office has run someone over on the beach, but they ran somebody over on the beach. Um, it's, like I said, not the first time. Not life-threatening injuries, but she did have to be transported to the hospital for sure. Um, fucking Deputy Todd Bryan's marked Chevrolet Tahoe SUV. Fucking, he was dispatched to a 911 hang-up call at a different location. He made a tight... A tight right turn as he took off and, and drove over a 23-year-old woman while she was lying on her back in the sand. Front front driver's side tire drives over this woman. Her name is Robin, by the way. Drives over Robin's right side, mid to upper back area. So it's just sort of like all the, this stuff. Just boom. Over it. She was transported to hospital as appropriate. But like I said, this isn't the first time this particular department has run someone over on the beach either, by the way. That's, this is not their first incident. <laughs> For most, most beach police are not like supposed to drive their SUVs like in the, the like the, the pedestrian areas most of them are relegated relegated to like light vehicles like four by fours quads that sort of thing after a series of these incidents did occur happened in california happened else happened elsewhere um you're like yeah you're not supposed to be doing this but cops are fat lazy and stupid so they like to drive their suvs on on beaches. It's fun, yo. The sand goes spray. Also, sometimes, you know, people go pop. <sighs> it's a new fad massage, right? Um, this one we're going to pop up here. Uh, we talked about it briefly last week. It wasn't a part of Popo's Bizarre Adventures, um, but we will be talking about it. Jesus Christ facts. Um, I'll put that on the screen. So anybody, if you want pause, pause the VOD here and you can, you can read the only facts fucking story there. Um, so here's, here's the video. This happened. Do you need to be arrested right now? No, no, no. Let's just watch the video and remind ourselves. We don't play this game. You understand me? Quit. Who's my sergeant? Yeah. Yeah, give me your car so I can put a report. Six hours. Six hours they left her in that holding cell with no medical attention after severely fucking her arm up. She took approximately $14 worth uh, retail worth of goods from the supermarket. It was a can, a couple of cans of soda and laundry detergent. She 
she is dementia ridden. She walked out of the store without even paying for it. She didn't even think about it. She walked in, she grabbed a couple of cans of Coke. She grabbed a bottle of fucking soap and she walked out retail value mo at most $14. No. Yeah. Latte. She, she had no idea. She has full blown, you know, like dementia. She is medically diagnosed. Um, yeah. So at least we now know the ex, uh, the ex piece of shit officer, um, fucking what's his name? Hop, right? Um, his name is hop. Uh, let me find his first name because Austin hop, Austin hop and Daria Jalali, um, responded to their call. That is the man and woman that you see in the officer's uniforms in that, uh, officer's costumes in the, in that video. Um, and so yes, the, the city will be paying $3 million to the family. Um, but there seems to be charges coming along the, uh, coming down the pike as well for officer, uh, officer pop and officer Jalali. Uh, Jalali seems to probably be getting lesser charges for sure. Uh, for sure, but still charges nonetheless. Um, they, you know, as was stated in the video, they both were allowed to resign. They should have been fired since they were allowed to resign. That means they can be rehired somewhere else. Um, Jalali is facing failure to report excessive use of force, failure to intervene in the use of excessive force and official mus misconduct. Um, fucking douchebag McGee, on the other hand, um, he is uh, now he has been sentenced f to five years in prison for um, for assault. Uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Hang on. I, I. There we go. Jesus. Um, so anyway, yes, he'll be doing five years. Um, looks like in probably gen pop. Um, he'll, yeah, I know, right? He'll be, he'll spring within a year. They'll give him some, some fucking, yeah. Uh, he'll, he'll get, um, you know, good behavior or some bullshit and they'll let him out within the fucking minute. Oh. Um Oh yeah, Alpha, 100%. Right, there's no such thing as a good is a good cop. Good cops get driven out of the force. Good cops whistleblow and report. Good cops get their lives and their wives' lives and their children's lives threatened because of that sort of thing. Um, th thank you, fact. Thank you. F I, I think. I think. <laughs> thank you, fact. Some of those screen grabs, some of those shots they do for those thumbnails. Jesus Christ. What about game wardens? What about them? What about conservation officers? Is there, they're not called game wardens anymore, Glazy, by and large. They're called conservation officers. They don't conserve shit, but that's neither here nor there. Um, oh, my God, Rumble. This is like, I don't have time to do this right now in the middle of Popo's Bizarre Adventure, but Rumble, we've done this so many times. I'm surprised you haven't been here for one. Um... Somebody, somebody hook Rumble up with like, you know, fucking the standard fare for, well, what about the police? 
Um, cedar, right? Cedar. Daniel Cedars. Now, I'm sorry, people of color. This story doesn't apply to you. Um, this story just isn't, this story isn't your story. Okay. Daniel Cedars, 65, his, his estate was just awarded, um, $1.2 million because he was shot and killed by two Indianapolis, uh, metropolitan police officers. Now, the only reason that I say that this doesn't apply to you people of color, right? Like this, this isn't about you is because Daniel Cedars, 65, Though he was killed by officers, straight up shot the fuck out of, at the officers when they rolled up, right? They, the officers were dispatched to an alleged incomplete 911 call near his residence. And so as they rolled up, apparently what happened was he shot. Like he, he fucking went off. Like he, he was like, holy shit. Like there's people like they didn't roll up with lights. They didn't roll up. Like they just rolled up. Right. And this dude just starts lobbing rounds. So they start lobbing rounds back. And so now you've got just gunfire happening, right? They're, they're literally just shooting into the residence at that point. Quote, Outside the residence, shooting indiscriminately from a distance and position of safety with their ability to retreat. They didn't have their lights on. They didn't announce their presence. And when they rolled up, Cedars just straight up lit them up. The decision was found that the officer's use of deadly force was intentional and objectively unreasonable and violated Caesar's constitution, Cedars' constitutional rights. And the jurors agreed in favor, ruling in favor of Caesar's estate. As I said, people of color, this doesn't apply to you. <laughs> Cops roll up, fucking unannounced, and the white dude just lights them up. Granted, they got him. They killed him. They killed him. But it was found that they were on the hook for it. That, in fact, they were the ones guilty. <laughs> They infringed his constitutional rights. Uh, let's see. Where am I being? Uh, oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah, like, yeah, of course, because he's fucking, because he's white. All right, let's look at another video that's probably going to irritate the fuck out of you people. Um, copy that, and there we go. Okay. So, um, I forget this dude's name. Um, you find him, though. All right. So, Warren County Sheriff's Department. Oh, Warren County Sheriff's Department. What are you going to do? Warren County is in Virginia. For those of you who don't know, hey, Wither, we're talking about your neck of the woods. Warren County, Virginia. Now, this is a 77-year-old gentleman who has um, dementia. He will, um, during the course of this incident, what's going to happen is that he, um, he is going to, <laughs> cops and dementia, yes. He's going to be driving a slightly erratically, so the cops are going to attempt to pull him over. He pulls over in a well-lit, uh, fairly well-lit um, uh, convenience store parking lot. Um, and he is arrested, um, because driving erratically, uh, fails to pull over, doesn't acknowledge commands, that sort of thing. Now he is, according to, uh, according to reports, uh, uh, record, uh, rec according to the reports as filed by the officers that were directly 
involved in the arrest. You'll see why we say that for a second. He, quote, sustained two non-life-threatening injuries, a cut to the ring finger on his right hand and a cut above his right brow near his forehead. Jesus Christ, man, just grab a hold of him. What are you... Wait for it. Wait for it. Hey, get your eyes back. Pay attention. It's coming. That was fing unjust and fing on called for Jesus Christ oh that's gonna be at the end the man saying that the incident was unjust was Corporal Lowry without him filming this incident and reporting the true event as it actually occurred we would be left with the absolute lie that the sheriff's office released Corporal Lowry is facing disciplinary measures. Corporal Lowry wrote in his report that when he arrived on scene, he observed an elderly man that appeared confused, opened the driver's side door with his arms down by his side, and that another deputy ran behind Mr. Ennis and placed his arms behind his back, facing jerking disciplinary Mr. Measures. Ennis towards yes. the Ford F-150, slamming him into the camper face first, and observing Mr. Ennis spit something out on the pavement just below his body. He also wrote that another deputy came from the side of Mr. Ennis and grabbed him, while the other other deputy had his hands behind his back, that Mr. Ennis was pushed over, but his legs had caught the hitch of the back of the truck, and that two deputies and Mr. Ennis were on the ground at this point. But the lies that the sheriff's office released isn't the worst part. Mr. Ennis was transported to the Warren Memorial Hospital, where he began exhibiting signs of a cranial bleed and was taken by ambulance to another hospital. Mr. Ennis died 13 days later. The chief medical examiner is conducting an autopsy, but has not released the cause of death and manner of death yet. <clears throat> so shout out to the soon not to be a police officer. Because he is. He's facing disciplinary measures. Um, so what happens every single good cop? Disciplinary charges, firing, harassment, murder. Yes, and they will harass him. Dude, for crossing the, the thin blue line, he will be harassed to the point of potential harm. Um, yeah. He will, he will be driven from the force, I assure you. Yeah. Because states, he's going to be state's witness. He'll be state's witness. Not a gang, by the way. Not a gang. Yes. Um, oh. Yeah, no, that's, that's the argument. There's no such thing as a good cop because no good cops can survive. He'll be driven from the force. It's that simple. Um, so... Lafayette, Lafayette, fucking uh, police department, the uh, Atchafalaya Basin. So we're in Louisiana, if you can't tell by the language. <laughs> Lafayette and Atchafalaya, right? Like we're in, we're in Louisiana. Um, <laughs> open, dude, it was a week 
for drunk cops. It was a week for drunk cops. Like there was a lot of drunk cops last week. I don't know what the deal is, but apparently last week was a bit of a drinky week for cops in this country. Uh, multiple charges for crashing onto the Atchafalaya uh, Basin Bridge uh, while driving on Interstate uh, uh, Interstate 10. Fucking, yeah, we're, again, that's in the headline list, non-binary. Like, it, fucking. <sighs> um, Lieutenant Todd Alcorn, intoxicated, reckless operation of a vehicle, open alcohol container, first degree vehicular negligent, neg, uh, negligent injury, um, booked, <laughs> booked and released on a $9,500 bond, by the way, 25 year department veteran driving West on the I 10, uh, fucking 7 AM that morning, 7 AM. And he's hammered, right? Stuck on a braille, uh, uh, a braille on a rail bridge, right? He hits a fucking bridge rail and loses control of the car. Apparently near mile marker 130, uh, 132, uh, Cassidy body. If you want to go out, uh, five miles east of whiskey Bay, comes to a stop in the left lane after fucking basically like almost going off the bridge. Right. He, he fucking comes into the left lane and just stops and gets hit by a fucking oncoming vehicle because well, traffic is oncoming. Alcorn critically injured, taken to Baton Rouge hospital. Uh, the night, the 44 year old, uh, 44 year old driver of the other vehicle was taken to Lafayette hospital. Um, Here's here's the real fun part. Alcorn, you know, the deputy, the guy who caused all of this trouble, the drunkard who got into his car at 7 a.m., hammered off his ass and fucking tried to dukes of hazard it up the side of a bridge or something. He's on medical leave. After the crash, the department spokesperson said, quote, We would like to request the public to keep Alcorn and his family in their prayers, and things are difficult right now, and out of respect for his family, we will not be releasing a statement. So, not a word about the victim in this incident, only thoughts and prayers for the fucking drunk cop. And at the same time, at the same fucking time, this motherfucker is out on medical leave. He's getting paid still by the taxpayers for being a drunk fuck who literally slams into oncoming traffic. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 can I, can we get in on this, this gig? Cause this gig seems great. Oh, it seems great. Fucking dude. You just get away with anything. Just get away with anything. I dude, I'm reminded of the Las Vegas officer. Again, the caucasity, the fucking cop here in Vegas who said, I'm going to kill an N word one of these days and get a paid vacation. And what did he do? He killed an N word one day and got a paid vacation per his own girlfriend testifying against him. Yeah. Fucking I, dude, I've, I think of that guy from time to time when we do these, this fucking, there's a cop in Vegas here that his girlfriend testified against him. He used to go around saying, I'm going to kill an N word and get a paid vacation. What did he do? He killed a black veteran who was having a mental crisis, just sitting in a car in a par apartment uh, complex parking lot. And they fucking lit that dude up. They fucking lit that dude up. That dude was on paid vacation for two years. And then he was allowed to uh, resign with pension. Yeah. He got a two-year paid vacation plus full pension when he resigned. Hi, right, Karina. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we talked about that guy fucking who was robbing casinos. Uh, yeah, 
I mean, not you no, know, he got to retire a lot early, Alpha. The guy was in his 30s or some shit. Like, he got to retire way ahead of fucking schedule. Way ahead of schedule. He got a free two-year two paid vacation plus early retirement. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was way beyond just, like, fucking retiring two years early. Like, we're talking, like, 20 years early or some shit like that. Yeah, it's fucking... Um... This is what the place looks like where he, oh, Jesus Christ. All right. So, yeah, I can I can sort of see it. I can see it. So this is where the, the drunkard fucking, so there's just two lanes opposing. And so he bounced off. So he bounces off one of these fucking rails. Like he, he pops his vehicle up off one of these. Loses, he like over here, loses control, swerves into oncoming left-hand traffic and fucking just nails a dude. All right. Car parkour. Yeah. Fucking hardcore parkour. Um, well, hang on. What was that? Um, let's do that. And satellite. That's the train track. There's the I ten. Holy shit, how would he have pulled this off, Cassidy? I'm looking at this with a satellite image now. How the fuck did this crazy fucker pull this shit off? Out here. Out here. Oh my god, if he plowed through this, I mean, it's doable. Jesus Christ. Dude, that's a hell of a fucking attempt. I know, right, tech support? Dude, I want I want like footage of that. That's some Dukes of Hazard fucking uh fucking family. Fucking shit. Like, yeah. Dude, that or I mean he did some impressive shit. That or he did some impressive shit. I mean, this is the barrier that he could bounce off of. Like, if he's moving, like, I, dude, yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, let's see. All right. I am where in my tap. Oh, Jesus Christ. Why did that do that up there? Whew. That was weird. That just. All right. Give me a sec. There we go. Weird. Weird. Uh, yeah, no. In fact, yes. Uh, Marsha Blackburn released a video statement. I don't know when this fucking article is from, but I don't know when they fucking, they need to update it. May 8th. Yeah, no. She released a video statement over the weekend um, openly criticizing the contraception ruling from 1965. Um, yeah. 
Like, that's constitutionally unsound rulings like Griswold v. Connecticut, Kilo v. City of, of New London, and NFIB versus Sibelius confuse Tennesseans and leave Congress wondering who gave the court permission to bypass our system of checks and balances. That is literally a denunciation of uh, the right to privacy uh, vis-a-vis contraception pur- purchases. So PolitiFact is wrong on that. Sorry. And there's there's literally multiple articles talking about how in fucking all the way back to March, Marsha Blackburn has been denouncing Supreme Court rulings uh, that uh, supported the contraception from 1965. Um, Yeah, you can go fuck yourself with that nonsense. You fucking people used to talk about how, oh, they wouldn't reverse Roe v. Wade either. The vast majority of people agree with Roe v. Wade. They wouldn't dare touch Roe v. Wade. Get the fuck out. They already are. I come from a generation that has seen genocide of gay people in this country. Yes, actual fucking genocide, right? I have seen the criminalization of uh, sexual activities uh, in my lifetime, right? No. Take, take your bullshit fucking quietest, oh, you're just being alarmist nonsense and go kick rocks with it. That's not what's going, oh, what's occurring. Now, let me go back to what we were already doing before I was interrupted by somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, anyway, <clears throat> Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, Minneapolis, uh, the police story, Wyatt Earth, thank you for the follow. Minneapolis cops are so offensive all right, so offensive that prosecutors are openly talking about how they are unable to use any body cam footage in cases which involve Minneapolis uh, police officers. I have some interesting quotes. We struggle to use the body cam footage of Minneapolis police officers in court because cops say such offensive things in the video. This is according to their own internal investigation. The Minnesota Department of Human Rights, which published the findings, um, found that officers say disrespectful and offensive things to criminal suspects, bystanders, witnesses, and generally speaking, anybody in and around the area in which they are operating. Prosecutors in Minneapolis and Hennepin County have openly talked about how it makes it difficult to use body cam footage in court because, quote, it makes MPD officers much look much less professional and respectful than those in neighboring departments. When MPD officers scream obscenities at community members, it makes it challenging for prosecutors to do our job and therefore undermines the criminal justice system. This is a re- part of the result of a two-year investigation. It found that, quote, police consistently use racist, misogynistic, and homophobic language, selectively enforcing the law based on a suspect's race and violating human rights laws. They literally undermine their own prosecutorial uh, uh, efforts because none of what they say can be used because it will bias the jury against the state's case. Astral. Oh, wait, I see the, 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 the tongue on that one. Oh, God, is he actually talking about globalists? Oh, Jesus, good luck with that, guys. I'm just going to keep going with fucking Popo's Bizarre Adventures and ignore the idiots. Um, <clears throat> if it's that bad, I don't think you need to worry about the bias, this caboose. So, federal data. Federal data. I love federal data. I love federal data. Federal data is great. Um, I love a good federal data source. But here's what, it, oh, 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 unprompted talking about the, oh, Jesus Christ. So, Illinois schools suspend and expel black students at disproportionate rates. Now, thankfully due to the federal data, we know it's happening with tickets and fines too. This is a result of a massive ProPublica um, investigation. Let's just take Bloom Trail High School in Chicago's South Suburbs. 
fairly diverse. 60% of the 1,100 students are black or multiracial. 27 are Latino. Only 12% are white. But when you look at the group who gets ticketed for misbehavior at school, the, dis the diversity vanishes. Police, in cooperation with school officials, have written 178 tickets at the school in Steger since the start of the 2018-2019 school year. That only goes up into 2021. 167 of those 168 tickets, keep in mind, keep in mind, black or multiracial, 60%. 60% of the students are black or multiracial. 167 out of the 160 uh, out of the 178 93.8% of all citations written by police went to black or multiracial students. This pattern though isn't just that one school. It is a, it is part of a larger pattern. A full investigation of ProPublica and by the Chicago Tribune has found that it is a pattern of in schools across the entirety of the state. They didn't go anywhere beyond the state, but in the schools and districts examined, an analysis indicated that black students were twice as likely to be ticketed than their white peers. Keep in mind, we're talking about cops ticketing students in schools for things that we used to give detention for. Okay, So Chicago, Chicago Tribune and, the, uh, and ProPublica sent out reporters to analyze tickets in nearly 200 school districts all across Illinois. Together, enrolled, oh my God, that is just the worst fucking link. Jesus, goddamn Christ, that's cancer. Anyway, for those of us on topic and not trying to do some weird anti-Semitic globalist rant in chat, um, 200 districts all across uh, throughout Illinois, which together enroll most of the high school students for the state. Now, the news organizations managed to obtain documentation of the race of students for 4,000 tickets issued in schools across 68 districts. After excluding places where ticketing was rare, schools in 42 districts remained, re representing more than one-fifth of the state's high school students. The analysis found that 9% of those students, right, we're analyzing 20% of the total t uh, ticket uh, schools and ticketing uh, within the schools in the, uh, in the, in the state. 9% of those students were black. 20% of the tickets went to black students. It's that simple. The police, the prison industrial complex is using the school system to route disproportionately racist, poor, and otherwise marginalized groups into the prison industrial complex directly from the school system. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. They are using a typical childhood act of rebellion or disciplinary measure that should normally be handled between the parent and the teacher or the school and the parent and this sort of thing and transforming those into a direct, a direct pipeline from school to prison for the benefit of maintaining the status quo, for the benefit of the capitalist class, for the benefit of the oligarchical masters of which we serve. Uh, and by the way, they do it for money. They do it for money. That's it. At the end of the day, the cops are doing it for cash. They're doing it for their position. Hey, what's up, Papa John? They are. Black people are more or less uh, are less likely to get their childhood records expunged. Black, black people are what eight times more likely to receive a charge for cannabis. Um, than white people. I mean, we've covered the things that can get you shot and or killed and or maimed um, for being black 
how many times now? Like we're just racking some up, right? Standing in a parking lot um, after having dinner, just having walked out from a restaurant with your friends. Um, fucking that dude was like 60 or some shit. Dude, they tackled him and fucking punched him in the face and shit. The guy who um, was just attempting to dr- get some, uh, get a cup of tea, uh, a cup of iced tea out of his um, car, in Baltimore, dude, they shot that dude multiple times, fucking paralyzed him, right? Driving, walking, breathing, trying to get an education, fucking, dude, the, the, the stuff that you will be criminalized and or attacked for physically in this nation for just being a person of color existing, all oh, that list is insane. So, yes, just going to school in many instances is, uh, quite, uh, <laughs> quite a, quite a travail. Joey is a, uh, tech support. Got to keep that legal slavery going in the deep South, baby. Yes. Yes, we do. Oh, all right. So how do we want to do this in which order we want to do this? All right. So while we're talking about malfeasances of cops, let's talk about Chicago history and the largest mass exoneration in all of Chicago history. Um, So, uh, Watts, um, let's see, Ronald Watts. We mentioned him in passing in one of the other, um, Popo's Bizarre Adventures. Ronald Watts was a cop on the Chicago police force who had a, he was well known. He was, uh, he had a reputation for threatening, harassing, and framing predominantly black, black and brown people on Chicago's South side. He is, I mean, he is sort of infamous apparently in certain circles and in certain, um, like communities within the South side. But he eventually got caught. He eventually got, um, um, like, he eventually got caught planting evidence. Um, And so what has happened is this investigation into Ronald Watts' back cases has gone in. And what they have found is that essentially he was so dirty that 212 convictions are being, uh, 212 people who have been convicted are being exonerated as a result of this singular cop. This singular cop, we can point to 212 people that were illegally, unconstitutionally, maliciously framed and sent to jail as a result of one singular cop. Now, here's the kicker for me. You think the rest of the cops didn't know what Watts was up to? Do you really think that Watts managed to create, fabricate, plant evidence to the tune of decades (coughs) and no one else knew? Do you really think for a second that no one else was in on this because we know there were other people in on this there that he got caught, um, taking a bribe, um, or he took, he got caught stealing money from who he thought was a, uh, a criminal. It was an FBI informant. He, he and fellow officers were stealing money from who they thought was a criminal. This was back in 2012. And it turned out to be an FBI informant. Fucking, yeah. Oh, I guarantee he trained a few. I I guarantee he trained a few. Oh, so many times, public. How many times have we seen body cam footage of Popo plant and evidence? So many times. So many times. So... Yes, 212, by the way, that 212 number, those are just black people. I'm not kidding you. 212 black people have been framed. Like, yeah. Oh, and by the way, um, somebody ran the numbers. The city spent $9.2 million defending the officers in and around this. They can't. Like, you can't even begin to understand the extent of the systemic corruption that is surrounding a 
situation such as that. You can't. So while we're talking about Chicago, um, Northwestern University <clears throat> published in uh, uh, PLOS 1 um, identified using a uh, machine lear learning algorithm. They, six, they identified 100, they actually over 100, it's 160. Um, they identified a, a, a just, just over 160 possible crews of police officers, gangs, gangs, <coughs> gangs. They're, they off, uh, they identified 160 possible like criminal gangs or of organized cops within the Chicago Police Department using machine learning algorithms. And Northwestern University and the researchers associated with this uh, and the Invisible Institute have published their, uh, their findings showing exactly what they, they did uh, and the data therein. Fucking identifying misconduct committing officer crews in the Chicago Police Department. So if you want to read the study, by all means, <coughs> have at the study. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, all they did was focus on Chicago. Um, fucking the study identified not only like abusive off, off, officers, but clusters whose interactions contribute to the emergence or diffusion of misconduct. So like literally it's, it's, it's network analysis. It's, it's machine learning based network analysis applied to police departments. And so it allows you to suss out a history and a pattern set that most humans probably couldn't identify. Statisticians, mathematicians would be good at this sort of thing, but it would take time. It would take effort. If they have the amount of data that they need, you can just run this through an algorithm and come out the other side and be like, that, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, right? So, yes, uh, a machine learning algorithm basically identified 160 possible gangs, like mini gangs or crews, right? That's my crew, right? 160 crews of criminal cops in the Chicago Police Department. So, you know, the same Chicago Police Department that we were just talking about with a police officer who was responsible for several hundred False arrests, planting evidence, fabrication of evidence, and false convictions. So if we've already figured out that one officer is possibly, we know of 212. So let's be generous and just say 300, right? We know of 212. Let's say he's responsible for potentially uh, 300, uh, um, 300 uh, um, um, illegal arrests, right? That hundred crews of 160, let's be, let's be conservative and say each crew only consists of three people. That's 480 people. Now we know that a single officer in, uh, who gets up to no good over the course of a career could probably do, uh, could probably illegally uh, help illegally convict and illegally arrest, let's say 300 people. That's 144,000 illegal arrests. So is that a number worth talking about? Is that representative of the, the few bad apples? Is that, is, that, is that not, oh, I don't know, a systemic problem? Even if we go super conservative, let's, let's, take, let's take some of those numbers and fucking shave them down. 480, we'll say three, three people in a crew, same thing. Um, and we'll say he was an outside performer. Ronald, uh, Ronald Watts was an outside performer. Let's say the average crooked cop only, uh, only fucks up, let's say over the course of their career, 50 people. That's still 24,000 people 
Is that not a systemic problem? If you are illegally, knowingly illegally arresting people and, create, and causing civil rights violations for 24,000 people, that to me seems like a systemic problem. So, I mean, we have millions of rape cases that have been problem. No inhale cases are going to get redone. Impossible system maintained. Yep. So you have somewhere between on the conservative side, 25,000, somewhere on the, you know, moderate side, 144,000. And if you go full liberal with the numbers, <coughs> you can easily hit 500,000, right? If you expand the crews up to say five or six or seven people, and you pull the the uh, the the average amount of uh, illegal arrests uh, up to say sixty five or seventy five over the course of a career, and you start doing that, you start to end up in territories where you're like, oh shit, right? Like, uh, that's you know, a lot. You could end up with a lot of numbers really quickly. What if 212 is the average, right? What if what if 212 is your average number of cases that these fuckers rig? That's over 200,000 people if like the groups start like, you know, is there what's a crew account for? 5, 6, 7, if it's 6, that's like 203,000 people. Right? Like that's is 200,000 citizens illegally arrested and their civil rights violated not a systemic issue? Is that representative of only a few bad apples when you have hundreds of thousands of your citizens being illegally arrested and um, fucking in their civil rights viola uh, violated? I don't know. Seems to me like it might be a problem, though. Oh. <sighs> Let's talk about Richard Whitehead, everyone. Richard Whitehead is, we've talked about Dave Grossman before. I've met Dave Grossman. Richard Whitehead, I haven't had the distinct displeasure of meeting. Um, Richard Whitehead is it depends on who you speak to. If you go on social media, Richard Whitehead is uh, a patriot. And a fighter and a warrior for the American right. He's he's praised by various groups um, that would, well, be considered possibly extremist by some. He has openly called for the execution of government officials. He's, he's, he has seen as disloyal to um, Donald Trump. <clears throat> In 2020, he uh, urged law enforcement officers to disobey COVID-19 uh, officials uh, 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 orders uh, from tyrannical governors, <clears throat> adding that we we're on the brink of a civil war at that time. <clears throat> Here's the problem. Mr. Whitehead, he's got a day job. He's a... <clears throat> independent law enforcement trainer who trains police officers all across the United States. He is an Idaho based law enforcement, uh, law enforcement consultant who has taught hundreds of police officers and public safety workers, uh, across the country. Um, <clears throat> in only the past four years. He's almost up into quadruple digits in four years. It just police officers, 560. <clears throat> but he is, um, he is most assuredly uh, one of the more popular trainers in parts of the world. Now, Idaho is, thank you, Ray, absolutely follow. He is most assuredly a, uh, <clears throat> he operates in the sort of Idaho, Western, uh, Western states. You know, the states that we are, know are notorious for white nationalist or ethno-nationalist like um, cults and gangs and um, um, compounds, um, that sort of thing. Um, he has quite a training course from what I've uh, managed to see and scrape together. Um, 
Washington temporarily uh, um, banned him in 2015 because he was advertising um, <clears throat> courses on his website um, featuring instructional material that referred to turban-wearing uh, police officers, not even suspects. Um, if a Sikh, right, wearing a turban, he would refer to them as towel heads, of course. Um, oftentimes misogynistic cartoons of women in bikinis. Um, his deception detection techniques <laughs> that he claims to have um, devised include, uh, no, no, this, uh, that would be Dave Grossman tech support. Um, Dave Grossman is the warrior trainee, um, the rise of the warrior officer, uh, a warrior cop. That's Dave Grossman. Um, he, uh, <laughs> part of his technique or one of the techniques that he trains, um, officers in for his deception detection technique involves victims of sexual assault and claimants of victual, uh, claimants of sexual assault. If they use the word we referring to themselves and an assailant in a statement, they are not to be trusted and their um, their statements therein should be con uh, considered deception uh, attempts at deception. So if they say something like, you know, I was in a bar <clears throat> and somebody sl was, I started to feel woozy and he took my arm and we went out to the uh, truck. That we, as far as Whitehead's indication of deception for detective purposes is uh, credible evidence that the uh, individual who was sexually assaulted was uh, a willing participant who then uh, changed their mind partway through. Um, <clears throat> he, he, um, <laughs> he has a slide in one of his courses that... Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> well, I'll just, I'll read it to you verbatim. The suspect is a gender fluid assigned male at birth wearing non-gender specific clothing, born Caucasian, but identifies as a mountain panda. He has stated that the intent behind the inclusion of such content is in his training courses is an attempt to push back. It is intended to push back against pressures on law enforcement to espouse left-wing ideological views on gender and race. <clears throat> He's one of five trainers that have been recently identified. Um, Reuters did some very excellent work on uh, digging up some dirt on these asshole trainers. He's one of five trainers that operate on a multi-state basis and train collectively thousands and thousands of police officers whose political commentary on their social media, um, shall we say, echoes some opinions um, that show ties to far-right figures. Um there are 35 training firms that also align with this. <sighs> Here's a breakdown. The five trainers that Reuters look, looked into have aired views, including the belief in vote rigging conspiracy to unseat Trump. One trainer attended the January 6th rally. Uh, two of the trainers have falsely asserted that prominent Democrats, including Joe Biden, are pedophiles. Um, the, uh, they all espouse QAnon-related conspiracy theories. Four out of the five have endorsed or posted records of their past interactions with, quote, far-right extremist figures, including prominent constitutional sheriff David Clark Jr. and Proud Boys leader Joe Biggs, who is currently being prosecuted for his involvement in the Capitol riots. Uh, he is, um, 
<clears throat> Whitehead is a member of the uh, constitutional sheriff philosophy that mandates that 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 which espouses the position that county sheriffs should ignore any law they find unconstitutional. Um, and so he's essentially what would we would probably call a sovereign citizen of sheriffs, right? Like he's he's in that um, that sort of camp. Oh, so he's of course you know listed in the Oath Keeper database as well, uh, <laughs> amongst many other things. Oh, so here's what you need to know. Um, Oh, probably. Commodity. Probably. Grossman's gotten around for a lot of years. Grossman's gotten around for a lot of years. Um, <clears throat> here's what you need to know. Private trainers for police departments is essentially an unregulated industry. It, it, sort of, it sort of is. You can be placed on a training list for a local police department of like available trainers. If you can get your company placed on that list, you can be hired as a trainer. Now, what that takes for it to be put on that list depends from location to location. Sometimes it's as simple as a sheriff putting you on the list. Like, ah, he's a good old boy. I know Dave from back in the day. Put him on the list. Um, so it is most assuredly a um, shall we say an area that has immense commercial opportunity, um, and is largely unregulated, especially when comparing to other countries, um, and other locales. Uh, so yes, um, Hunter Biden, NRA, text with the Proud Boy leader. Instagram, fucking, I mean, moonlighting on January 6th, the political correctness stuff, of course. Um, yes. <clears throat> um, they got permission <clears throat> to attend one of his training classes, which I would never do. Uh, I'm not saying I wouldn't go to it. I would just never get permission to go if I were an investigative reporter. I would just simply purchase the class. I just make sure I can go. That's it. But it, even even knowing that there was a Reuters reporter in the room <clears throat> in Colleen, Texas, in Colleen, Texas, for those of you who know, know your fucking locations that you should know, Colleen, Texas, he referred to COVID-19, of course, as the China flu. He openly mocked transgendered people. He blasted, quote, blasted some states' efforts to end qualified immunity. Um, saying that if qualified immunity goes away, that takes away your ability to make a mistake and you will do jail time. <clears throat> and in an interview after the session, Whitehead said his class was about teaching officers bulletproof methods of documenting incidents on the job and not becoming susceptible to the winds of political correctness and appeasement. So, good old Richard Whitehead, Dick. He's the latest one. Dave Grossman, we've had to um, we've had to keep an eye on for many years now. Well, the newest one, the newest bad boy to join the group, y'all, is Richard Whitehead. Richard Whitehead, well, he likes to train police officers for money um, and uh, teach them some interesting stuff. Where is there is one anecdote? Um, there we go. Uh, Ozzy Kenovich is a sheriff in Spokane, <clears throat> in Spokane County, Washington. He's just across the state line from the Idaho County where Whitehead once ran for sheriff. Yes, he ran for sheriff, by the way. He fucking wanted, he wanted the power, but he was rebuffed. Now, <clears throat> during Whitehead's campaign, Ken uh, Kenovich, um, was highly, uh, uh, Spokane. Yeah, whatever. Uh, fucking he, um, Spokane, uh, Spokane, fuck them. Uh, Spokane. Uh, he, um, he was highly critical of, uh, Whitehead's ties to militias and the constitutional sheriff's movement during his entire campaign. 
Kenovich was contacted by Reuters because Whitehead had been hired by his sh- by his own office to run 15 deputy training sessions. And Kenovich was shocked to say the least. He was like how wait what? He said yes, he's operating under a company name and clearly nobody has done the vetting on the company name. So this is Richard Whitehead who has been teaching the training classes for your deputies. Upon finding this out, he said, quote, I'll be having a conversation with my training unit. But even the guy who hated Whitehead didn't notice that this motherfucker had infiltrated his own force, his own sheriff's department. His own sheriff's department was being trained by the guy he was critical of, who he hated. Because of the absolute lack of oversight in commercial third-party police training units. So, yeah. Popo's Bizarre Adventure, everyone. <laughs>